hey loves and welcome back to my channel so in today's video uh, we are going to learn how to make a victorian corset so i made the simplest one for beginners that is 12 pieces this one is 12 pieces so i think this one will be easier for us to understand maybe next time we can do the more complicated ones so i'll take you guys through the pattern paper the cutting and the stitching so please do click on watching so here is the front part and i used only one yard of dolphins for this for both the main fabric and the lining so this is the pattern paper that we are going to be using this video will be a kind of long because i would like to explain very well so the first thing that we are going to do is to write down our measurements. I'm sorry I didn't write them on this pattern paper. But the bust measurement is 40. The waist is 30. But I made it 28 for snatching. Then the hip is 44. So we will measure the shoulder. I'll show you guys how to make a yoke too for this type of corset. We will measure the shoulder. The shoulder divided by 2 is 7.5 plus half an inch that is eight inches i marked the eight inches so from that point where i measured my shoulder i will mark my bust point the bust point is the first thing that i'm going to mark so that i will not get confused the under bust is 13 inches the half length is 16 inches or 16 and a half, depending on what you want. Then the full length of this Victorian corset is 22. But I want to make a longer co um, corset. So I made it 24 plus half an inch seam allowance. That is 20. For one inch seam allowance, that is 25. If you want also, you can make it 25. If you want the basque to go down. So from there, I'll mark my chest line on the normal day my chest line is supposed to be eight but i'll make it nine because you know that the armhole part of this return corset is always down so instead of making it eight which is my normal chest line i'll make it nine so i marked nine because i want the chest line to be low so that it will cross our armpits very well so i'll connect the chest line to the shoulder and I'll find the midpoint. The midpoint of nine is four and a half. So from there, I will mark my armhole. So here is it um, now. So I will mark my shoulder slant and I'll also measure my neckline for the yoke. That's, I'll make it three by three. That is the standard. So I'll go ahead and curve the neckline. then i'll connect the neckline to the shoulder slant so this is what it looks like for now so the next thing that we are going to do is to measure our dart line so the nipple to nipple is eight inches divided by two that is four so i'll start marking at the nipple or bust point then i'll extend the four inches down to the full length of this corset so i have extended it down to the full length so i also extended it to the chest line so from the chest line i'll come up by one inch the reason why i came up by one inch is because i want the neckline to be low because I want this corset to give me that push-up effect. But if you want, you can come up by 2 inches or 3 inches, depending on how high you want the neck to be. Then from that 1 inch that I extended upwards, I will make my curve. The neckline will have a sweetheart shape. I don't know if you get. If you want your neckline to be higher than this 8 inches fine if you want it to start at six or five fine just raise it up and then mark your neck dead to where you want so my chest line is nine and i went up by one inch that is eight so this eight is the neckline the depth of the neckline so i'll cut out the yoke and then keep it aside we are done with the yoke part now because i've marked the neckline the major neckline so i noticed that the curve 
did not really smoothen out well. So I'll go ahead and curve it the way that I want. Since you're not using the yoke, this will not affect the corset. So I'll label the lines, the bust point on the bust, half length, and the full length, that is if you want it to be 22, and then the allowance. Let's just assume that this one is the allowance or the hip line. This 25 will serve as our hip line. So at the under bust, I will subtract one one inch on each side of this corset, and I will do the same thing at the half length also. So um, for Victorian corsets, the half length and the under bust is the major contour contoured part. So at the full length, I'll subtract only half an inch. I subtracted one one inch at the half length and the under bust, but at the full length, I subtracted half an inch. So I will extend my line to my neckline as well. Then I will curve. I will make my breast curve. So if you're making um, a Victorian corset, make sure that you mirror each part. Like each piece should be equal with the other. Like the center and the side should have the same shape the same curve everything so that when you are joining none will be longer than each other i don't know if you understand what i mean by mirroring each other then at the neckline i will subtract one one inch on two on the both sides then i'll connect my curve so after making this curve our breast curve is out already So I have contoured the upper bust. This is the upper bust tightening for now. Then I will extend the one inch down to the half length. I'll extend the one one inch down to the half length, and then I will extend from the place where I marked the one inch to the place where I marked half inch at the full length. Then I will extend this half inch down to the hip line as well. Even if you want your corset to stop at 22, make sure you mark your hip line first. Like make sure you mark 25, 26, or 27 first. It will guide you. It will help you to get the accuracy. Then after, you can now cut out from the full length. I don't know if you, if you understand. If you want, you can stop at 22. But even if you want to stop at 22, eh, make sure that you added the hip line. This hip line will help you to achieve the curve that you want. So these shaded parts are the parts that I will cut out. So anything that I will cut out, I will shade it. So after doing that, I will measure my bust. My bust is 40, 40 inches. And remember, I I marked um, one inch that at the neckline, one inch here and here. That is two inches. So I will add back that two inches. So 10 plus 2 is 12. I'll mark 12. This is the only contouring that we do at the upper bust. So that's why I did not add extra allowance. So bust is 10 plus the 1 1 inch is subtracted at each dart. That is 2. So at the waist, remember I told you the waist is 30. But I made it, um, I made the waist 28 for snatching so seven inches plus two because i subtracted one one inch on each side of this dart so the seven plus the one one inch is nine so i will still remove mark other darts that's one thing about victorian corset so the other darts that will still mark i will take out 2.5 from those darts so i will add 2.5 to the nine that we have and that is 11 and a half so the unique thing about victorian corset is that it has multiple darts at different different places if you want to have like three darts four darts you are free so at the hip line i will not subtract any other thing so the hip is 44 plus half half inch that is one inch 44 divided by four is 11 plus half an inch, half an inch on each side, that is 12. 11 inches plus this half an inch, 
this half an inch that sub I would subtract it at the that area will give me twelve. So I will go ahead and mark twelve. I will not subtract any other thing at the hip line and at the chest line. That is the neckline. The only place that I'll subtract is at the under boss and the half length. So I am done with that on the hip line and at the bust area. So I'll connect from my half line to the area where I marked the 44. So if you mark your hip line at the hip line at 25, it will give you a fine shape. But if you mark it at the full length, the triangular shape will be too sharp. So mark your hip line first before marking taking the measurement for don't take your hip line measurements at the full length at 22 it will be too sharp take it at the hip line so i have shaded the major dots so we'll go ahead and add another dot so i will divide the side piece by two so from if you measure the underboss it is seven so the midpoint of seven is three and a half so i will divide it by two i'll extend this three and a half line that i measured that is i measured from the point from the point um the side of the underboss i measured it and it is seven and i divided the seven into two that is 3.5 that's how i got this line that i marked now so remember i said that i will add another that at the underboss and at the half length so i'll take out one one each on each side of these darts one inch here and one inch here i will do the same thing at the half length as well one inch here and one inch here so at the bust area and at the hip line i will not subtract anything so i'll connect this one one inch then from there i will connect to the points of the dart if you want you can subtract half an inch at the bust area and on these darts that are marking right now you can as well subtract half half inch at that armhole area but i don't want to do it but if you want you can but i don't want to subtract any other thing i subtracted only at the under bust and at the half length so from that area i will connect to the dart line and I'll also do the same. So remember that I had added extra two and half for that at this half length. So for now, I have taken out two inches already because I marked one inch at the right side and one inch on the other side. So I have taken out two inches from the 2.5 I added before. I have taken out two inches already so it is remaining half an inch remember when i was ma marking my waistline i divided my waist by four and then added two for the first dart that i marked and added another 2.5 for this second dart for this second and the last dart that i will mark so i've already taken out two inches it is remaining half an inch so at the center part you can divide it by two if you want but i want to take out the dart at the middle at the center front so i came in by half an inch and then i will connect from the half length to the full length this is another dart but this dart is very small just half an inch and then from there i will go up to the bust point so I added 2.5 extra before, right? So I have taken out two on the side darts and the half at the center darts. So I'm shading the center darts right now. So if you notice, we have three darts on this corset. If you want, you can go ahead and add multiple darts. Just keep dividing this pattern paper. You divide the center, you divide the middle, you divide the side. But for now, let's leave it like this. So for the basque shape, most times, um, Victorian corsets do have basque shape. So from the half length, you can come down by four inches, but I want to make mine five inches. 
because the person is a kind of tall so you can come down by four inches but it came down by five so from that five i will call if you want it to have triangle fine but me uh, for me i want to curve the bask if you want if you want you can you can go up by you can even come down by three inches so that it will be up or but i came down by five so that it will balance so i am done marking my curve and i will shade it so that you guys will know the areas that i will cut out so all these areas that i shaded is the areas that you will cut out like i said if you want to divide your pieces go ahead and divide multiple times and add half an inch half an inch on use half an inch half an inch that do not use more than half an inch again so here is the three pieces that i have so if you cut it the if you cut it on if you cut the right and the left side you will have six pieces so here is the center so i will label it cms the c is for the center the m is for the middle and the s is for the side so label me one two three my define my um this um distracts you or may, may be difficult for you but this cms will be very easy for you to understand so i have marked the back pattern i've marked my shoulder the armhole the chest line the half length and the full length if you noticed i did not mark anything like boss points on that boss because we don't need those measurements at the back we only need the half length the full length the chest line and the hip line so i also added zipper allowance in case you want to add a zipper allowance to yours so the half length is enough for you all your darts for the back will fall at the half length so at the chest line i'll measure my bust my bust is 40 remember so 40 divided by 2 is 10. remember to start from the zipper allowance when taking your measurements so 40 divided by 4 is 10 so i'll go ahead and mark that 10 because i will not take out any darts at the chest line so i will not add any allowance for that so at the waistline i will take out um i will take out two and a half inch that at the waistline so my waist is 28 divided by 4 7 and i added two and a half that is 9.5 i marked it so at the hip hip divided by 4 is 14 44 divided by 4 44 divided by 4 is 11 sorry I marked 11 because I will not take out any dart. But any area that you want to take out a dart, make sure you add an allowance for that dart. So all my darts will fall at the half length. So this is the side piece of the front. You will measure the length so that it will be, uh, it will be equal with the side piece of the back. So at the half length, I will come down by 5 inches like I did before at the front. Then from there, I will curve my bask. If you want, stop at 22. Like just curve it and join at the 22. For some corsets, the back is shorter than the front. So just curve it to that 22. But if you want, curve it to the hip line. If you want the back to be long, some are short at the back why some are equal with the front so it depends on you if you want you can just stop at this 22 as long as they are equal at the side you are okay so at the chest line you will come down by 1.5 inch you don't need the neckline to be too down just come down by 1.5 inch and then make a curve like to look like a shallow round curve then you connect it to that area where you came down from 1.5 and then connect to your boss. So this is the yoke for the back in case you want to add the yoke. So the neckline depends on you. If you want to make it round or V, fine. So I'll go ahead and cut out this yoke for the back. I'll cut out the neckline and I'll cut out the yoke. 
so now we are left with the with the remaining parts of the back that is from the chest line to the full length if you want to stop at 22 you can stop but if you want you can also extend it to 25 or the length that you want so for this corset i want to extend it to the hip line like i said you can stop at 22 at the back fine or even 19 it's fine so just make sure that the hip the sides the side or from the chest to the full length is equal on the side so that when you join the front and the back none of them will be longer than the other on the side so i am done now the next thing is adding our darts so for the darts you will divide this back piece into three like the bust is 10 right so if you divide 10 into three it's you have 3.3 .3. so i'll go ahead and mark 3.3 .3, 3.3 and 3.3 .3. from here you mark 3.3 .3, and from the point where you mark that you mark another 3.3 .3. so you have divided these back parts into three pieces so just go ahead and draw your straight line these lines are our new dart lines. Victorian corset has multiple darts. So I'll relabel the zipper allowance so that I will not get confused. Then at the half length, just subtract half an inch, half an inch on each side of the dart. You don't need to mark one inch, it will be too much. Just subtract half an inch and connect to the chest line, then connect to the hip line. So you go ahead and mark this dart here. So this half half I've marked now, one inch is off. So it is remaining 1.5. I'll mark half half again, one inch is off. Remember that I added extra 2.5 for seam allowance at the waist. For that allowance, sorry, at the waist. So I have removed one, one now, two, two inches is off. So it is remaining the zero point, the half inch that I added. So I will remove that half inch at the zipper allowance side if you are adding a zip. But if you are not adding a zipper, just subtract that half inch at the center back. So I've subtracted half an inch. I will connect to the chest line and to the hip line. So I'll go ahead and shade them. I will shade the darts that I will cut out. So I will go ahead and cut out these darts. The center, the middle and the side. Middle and center is the same but just use it like this because it will help you to note the parts. So I am done cutting now. Here are the three pieces for the back. So if you want to lace the back, if you want to tie it, you take out the zipper allowance. So I will cut off the zipper allowance because I don't need it. I don't want to add a zipper to this corset. So after taking it out, I will come in by one inch. I will take out another one inch from the men um from the main measurements because i want it to be open at the back so at the half length i'll subtract one and half remember i marked one at the chest line but i marked one and half at the half length and then one at the hip length so you connect from the chest line to the half length as you can see it is deep at the half length then you connect to the hip line so now we have taken out that 2.5 we added before one inch for the side one inch for the middle and then half an inch for this lace part or the zipper part so here is the front this arrow this place you can see the places that are marked arrow down that place is to indicate the down part so that we will not get confused if you are sewing you just mark those arrows 
that are facing down so that you know the down part of this corset because you know the pieces can be confusing sometimes so you can see all the down parts has this green arrow those arrows that are marked so those ones are the back parts you can see the side front and the side back is equal at the side so this is the cutting part i have added um a paper stay to this you can add the type of stay you want but make sure you add an interface to it so i'll go ahead and cut out and remember that i did not add any seam allowance at the side and i did not add any sewing allowance so i'll go ahead and add half an inch seam allowance round all of them so here is the center you can see i wrote seed there so i'll go ahead and cut i'll add half an inch round all the parts so at the side if you want you can add one in two inches seam allowance but for me i don't want to add up to one i used half an inch because i will not there is no need for measurements when sewing so i'll go ahead and add half an inch round all of them but if you want you can add one inch or two inches seam allowance at the side parts but for me i did not do that i added half to all of them so that when i'm sewing i know that i'm just sewing with half inch i will not have to measure anything so i'll go ahead and cut out all of them that way half an inch round so i am done cutting here is the center for the front i cut the main fabric to have a joining at the center and i also cut the lining so everything is in four four pieces two for the main fabric and two for the lining so here is the center the middle and the side all of them have half an inch seam allowance round so this one is for the back the same thing half an inch round so this is the sewing period if you are sewing please place your pattern paper on each panel so that you will not be confused so this is the cms center the middle and the side so leave the pattern paper on top of them so that you will not get confused so what you'll be doing is that you pick one from here and one from here so that you will know the parts you are picking from so this for the center remember that the center has an opening at the front at the middle so i'll go ahead and sew so after joining that you can see i'm using half an inch i'll go ahead and join for the lining parts so if i open it up this is how it looks like you can see how it looks so you go ahead and after joining everything you still iron so i will join the center part of the lining as well if you join for the fabric join for the lining so that you will not get confused So I've joined the center for the lining. So right now I'll start picking from the middle. Because I'm done joining the center. So I'll pick one middle and join. You can see that they mirror each other. I don't know if you understand what I mean by mirroring. Like what you have on the center or the cup part of the center is what you have on the cup part of the my middle so that everything we align. None will be longer than each other. Even if it's of course it will at, at least be just half an inch so i've added the cup part so i'll go ahead and add for the left side i'll go ahead and join this is for the main fabric So you can see it is taking shape already then after that i will go ahead and join for the lining part you can see i am picking it gradually by so doing you will not get confused
so i am done joining the cup parts of them so the only part remaining now is the side part you can see they are taking shape gradually so i'll go ahead and start picking the side parts So when you are sewing, keep your pattern paper on top of them. It will help you a lot. So that one is for the other side. I'll go ahead and join. So you can see the front part is ready. So I'll go ahead and repeat it for the main fabric. The one that I joined is for the lining. So I'll go ahead and fix the side parts of the front for the main fabric. So after doing all these things, please do not forget to notch. Notch before ironing. It will help you a lot. So I am done joining the front and this is what it looks like. Sewing a Victorian corset is actually easier. The cutting part might be hard but sewing it is actually easier. So I am done with the front part and here is the back part. So I placed the pattern paper on them and I've arranged the center, the middle and the side. So I'll pick one center and one middle and then sew. So I'm done for the uh, with the fabric part. I'll go ahead and join for the lining. You can see I'm done with that. You open up an iron, but that will be later. So I'll go ahead and repeat for the lining parts. I made a mistake here i miss i mismatched it somehow yeah okay no it's okay but i think i made a mistake here so if you make any mistake please feel free to correct it it is never too late to correct just losing it and then correct okay it is okay the i did not make any mistake here so i'll go ahead and add the side parts of the back these are the side parts so I'll go ahead and join the side. So whatever you do for the fabric, please repeat it for the lining.
so i'm done joining the pieces for the back and for the front so as you can see i am done and i've also repeated the same thing for the lining so here is the back and like i told you guys before i added just half an inch to the side to the major seam allowance that is to the side the shaping part so for me for for me right now i will join the front and the back because i don't have to measure anything so i will join it once before ironing because i know that i added only half an inch at the shaping area so i'll take out that half an inch and that's all maybe after fitting if there's any need for adjustments you can now go ahead and make your adjustments So I have joined this side. I'll go ahead and join the other side. You can see that somewhere is a kind of longer. This place that I'm trimming right now. But it is just with half inch. That's why I said you should mirror all of them. So that even if they will be longer than the other. If, even if each will be longer than the other. It will be by highest half an inch. So I will go ahead and join the other side. So here is it guys i am done so this place that is too curvy is the side area so i'll go ahead and repeat the same thing for the um lining part of the main fabric and then notch all of them notch and then iron very well so i'll go ahead and join the other side as well so here is the back you can see the center back is curvy it will give you that fine shape at the zipper allowance side at lacing area so i'll join the front and the back the right side i'll join them by half an inch and i'll also go ahead and join the other one so you can see that the side of the front and the side of the back is equal none is longer than each other so this is how they look you go ahead and iron so ironing is highly needed when making a victorian color so i am done ironing and this is what it looks like you can see the cup part this is very fine you can use this for a blouse or anything you want but you can see that this is very fine to me so i will go ahead and turn the the front i'll turn the um i'll turn the the lining i'll turn the main fabric with the lining sorry so i'll turn the front first before the back so before that i'll go ahead and trim off any excess that we have in case we have too much so i am done ironing so well so at this point you can add a bra cup if you want if you noticed i did not add any wording here using the wording is fine but when making a Victorian corset, I will always advise you to use a bra cup, an already made bra cup. So after ironing, you will use your needle and thread to attach it. So what I'll do right now is to add my boning to the lining part. If you want it to be at the front part, fine. If you want, you can run a bias on top and insert it. If you want, you can run the bias inside and insert it. You, you know how to attach your boning, so do it. Then at the zipper allowance side, at the lacing area, add a boning too at the lacing area. So I am done adding my boning here. So I did not add to all of them because I'm doing this for the sake of this video. So you can see that I added to the lacing area as well. Boning is needed at the lacing area because it will give um, stability so that after tying the corset, it will be firm. So here is it. I'm done with the boning. I added it to the lining part. So you can now place the main fabric and the lining together and then go ahead and turn the upper part. 
then after turning the upper part i'll come back and show you guys So I am done turning the upper part and I have top stitched, you will notch and top stitch, then you will turn in and iron, then after ironing it you can now go and turn the down part. Please remember to add a bra cup, it will be very fine. And remember what I said about the neckline. If you want it to be higher than my own, fine. Just that I needed a push-up effect for this one. And this is a simple course, a simple Victorian corset. It is not too complicated. So I have turned the down parts also, and this is what I have. You can see the bust area. That is what I'm holding right now. You can see the down part. The side is curvy. It has a basque shape so here is the fitting on my body i couldn't get the video very well this is not for my measurements but you can see that it is fine and the curve on the side is okay so thank you guys for watching thank you for subscribing to my channel um we have reached 50k please do not forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you watch my new videos when i upload bye